Right then, picture the scene with me. You've been out riding all summer, it's been incredible, but the shifting at the back, getting a bit inconsistent, a bit mercurial, if you will. It's time not only for a service, but a new cassette as well. You rush to wiggle, search for a replacement, and nearly pass out when you see the price, and then you definitely pass out when you realize they're basically all out of stock. Whilst unconscious, you have visions of a cassette that is cheap, lightweight, and reliable. This cannot be. This unholy triad is cast. No such product can exist. You awake in a cold sweat. <gasps> Before you lies a package and a purchase receipt from AliExpress. Your wish has been granted. But at what cost, traveler? What? Right then, autumn feels like it's upon us. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, the summer's just evaporated. I don't, I don't know where it's gone, but, but luckily, Sirocco have got, have got me covered. So the weather this time of year is gonna be really changeable. So for example, it was meant to be sunny this evening, but yeah, the drizzle has really started to come in. So I always dress like this in a kind of modular fashion. So for example, you could be fine heading out in a, in a short sleeve jersey, but then the weather might change like it has done <laughs> this evening, or you could just get cold when you, when you stop for lunch. So for me, it's all about cycle vest or, or gilet, neck warmers and, uh, and arm warmers as well. They're all super lightweight and packed down really small when you don't need to wear them, so you can just kind of carry them with you. Just means you can change what you're wearing on the fly. I find it really useful, especially on longer rides when you don't really know what the weather's gonna do. So you're never kind of too hot or too cold. You can change your gear, so you can always find that find that middle ground. Really helps me stay stay comfortable. Anyway, if you want to get yourself prepped for some crispy autumn cycling, then yeah, check my link below and have a look at Sirocco. They do some really good quality gear that's really well priced as well, if you uh, if you ask me. Plus, you'll get 10% off and helps me out as well. So uh, yeah, pretty cool. Anyway, all that aside, let's, uh, let's check out some cassettes. Hello, and welcome back. <laughs> ladies and gents, to another largely irrelevant Trace Fellow production. <laughs> My name, as always, is uh, yeah, it's Luke. Right, so these hybrid hybrid cassettes here, part aluminium, part steel, all uh, woman. Uh, <laughs> but basically, you will know if you've watched me for a little while that I'm always on the lookout for ways that I can drop a little bit of weight from my bike here on a bit of a budget. And these hybrid cassettes here fit that brief pretty well in uh, in my opinion now i came across these a while back and i've been through a couple of these now and they are all over uh, aliexpress so much so that the minute you type cassettes into the search bar these hybrid ones are often some of the first search results to be returned but what are these like and more importantly how do they stack up against your kind of regular bog standard fully steel cassette that i assume most of you are, are kind of more familiar with well stick around because we're going to find out today. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, oh, worth pointing out before we continue, I, I bought all the stuff in this video, all these cassettes and things, with my own cash. So, uh, there you go. Anyway, uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's go. Right, so first and foremost, let's go over the construction of these cassettes. I'll, I'll put aside the hybrid cassette for now. So this is a pretty generic, fully steel cassette that most of you are probably familiar with. It's actually from a, from a brand called Sunshine on, on AliExpress. Pretty cheap, but works well, and is gonna be representative of how most mid to low end steel cassettes are constructed. So the sprockets are stamped or cut from sheets of steel, and then these are stacked on top of each other with, uh, with plastic spaces in between. Hopefully you can Hopefully you can see that. So not the lightest, but these are usually pretty cheap, work well, and being steel will be nice and durable as well. Now these lightweight hybrid cassettes here, these are a little bit different. Now the bottom set of teeth, these are basically identical to this one here. So uh, yeah, just stacked steel gears or sprockets with it, with spaces in between. But the top set of gears here, so the top five in this case, are all machined from a single block or billet of aluminium to help cut down on the weight. You can see the machining here and it honestly looks really nice. And all the ones I've had in the past have had pretty nice consistent machining and I think it looks really cool. Now, unfortunately, I don't know the specific alloy of aluminium that, that's used here because for example, 7075 would have been a great choice with zinc 
as the primary additive for that alloy. It gives it a, a pretty high strength and a decent durability as well. It's what my aluminium chain rings are made out of, for example, but like I mentioned, it doesn't state it anywhere from what I could find, which is a, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, uh, oh, and what I've got you, if you could hit subscribe and, and the like button as well, if you're, if you're enjoying it. Uh, yeah, really, really does help me out and kind of helps bump me up the algorithm. Um, yeah, really appreciate it. Anyway, um, that aside, let's press on. Okay, so let me show you what you can expect to pay for one of these hybrid cassettes on AliExpress. So this is one from a brand called Sunshine, and you can get their 11 to 32 tooth cassettes, so the same one that I've been showing really, for £34. There's one from a brand called Riot, and for their version, it's basically the same, so £30 plus, plus £5 delivery. And for the ZTTO version, which is exactly the same as the one that I've been demonstrating in this video, 36 quid. So they're around the same ballpark in price. And I've had a number of these different uh, kind of hybrid cassettes from different brands over the last year or two. And while they may look slightly different and have a different brand name, the product is essentially exactly the same. They're built the same way with the same materials. I think they just stick a different brand name uh, on, on top. Now, uh, just for a bit of context, that steel cassette that I've been showing you from Sunshine cost me 22 pounds. So yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty good value. And for further context, uh, the equivalent Shimano 105 cassette, on the R7000 version, for an 11 to 32 tooth cassette, 60 quid, if you can even find it anywhere, because <laughs> they're basically out of stock everywhere. So hopefully I've kind of demonstrated that for what is quite an intricately machined piece of kind of technology, I think paying 35 pounds kind of demonstrates pretty good value, in my opinion. Right, okay, so this is the uh, this is the main attraction, right? So we got all this nice machining here on this on this aluminium one. So how many grams we drop in with this rude boy? Well, first of all, these are 11 speed, 11 to 32 teeth cassettes, both of them. So let's check the, uh, the steel one first. This comes in at 350 grams there. So pretty, pretty standard stuff, I would say. And the hybrid aluminium one here, that comes out at 210 grams there. So that's a pretty tasty 140 gram weight saving with this one. So 40% lighter than this than this steel one. And the bigger the cassette, the, the better the weight saving is gonna be, comparatively speaking. So, I mean, if you run 11 to 34 or an 11 to 36 cassette, these hybrid ones here are going to be considerably lighter than their fully steel counterparts. Now, I haven't taken into account the more premium Altegra and Dura Ace cassettes. They make use of aluminium and carbon spiders. And the Dura Ace cassettes even use titanium sprockets to, to reduce weight, but they are very expensive. And I think the average guy or gal is probably gonna think twice before dropping that much cash uh, on a cassette. But even so, these hybrid cassettes are still pretty competitive in the weight category, which is, uh, yeah, which is pretty cool. But for that lightness and that comparatively low price point, there is another price to pay with these hybrid cassettes. Okay, so these are these hybrid cassettes here, they're cheap, they're lightweight, and they're readily available. However, once you start to factor in durability, this is where things start to unravel slightly. Now, whenever, whenever durability is mentioned, there will undoubtedly be someone in the comments that claims to get three trillion miles out of their out of their chains and cassettes because they use a proprietary blend of eowax combined with the tears of a gcn presenter as a chain lubricant <laughs> however i have always used a pretty box standard chain oil this green this green finish line here it's cheap it goes on well and it keeps my drivetrain not nice and quiet so i really like it but importantly i think it's going to be pretty comparable to what a lot of you out there are using to lubricate your kind of your, your drivetrains so with that in mind out of a fully steel cassette like this one here pretty pretty standard one i will normally get six maybe seven thousand miles at a push out of one of these or around three chain replacements um yeah pretty respectable i think now, out of these hybrid aluminium cassettes, I would normally expect to get two and a half thousand miles, so much less than a fully steel one. But it does depend on how, and importantly, where 
you ride as well. So for example, round here in Cornwall, the hills are, <laughs> they're absolutely diabolical. So when I'm out cycling, I spend the majority of my ride, well, a large proportion in the climbing gears. So these aluminium ones at the top. So two, maybe two and a half thousand is what I'll get around here. But in London, which is super flat, like an enormous <laughs> floodplain, basically, I spent much more time in the steel gears towards the lower end of the cassette. So three, maybe three and a half thousand is what I could expect around there really. So it does depend on where you ride. But as a general rule, what you normally get out of a fully steel cassette, you'll be very lucky to get half of that and it will be more towards the third of that distance really in my experience. And that in a nutshell is the biggest drawback with these, uh, with these cassettes here. They're cheap and they're light, but durability, it's a little bit lacking. But there is one other quirk worth mentioning about these cassettes. Right, so one of the first things that I noticed when I picked up one of these cassettes is that the aluminium teeth are noticeably thicker than the steel counterparts. So regular steel teeth are usually 1.5 millimeters thick. These aluminium ones here, two millimeters. So that additional material, that additional thickness increases the overall strength and durability of the aluminium part here. But as I'm sure you can imagine, it does slightly affect shifting or more importantly, the indexing of your gears. In my experience, when you got one of these on, your indexing at the back needs to be spot on or you'll get some ticking and grinding of the gears and it's not very pleasant. Um, so yeah, let me try and explain here. Okay, so this is a really simplified view of the steel cassette on the left and the hybrid cassette on the right and you've got the chain, the chain in blue here. So you can imagine with the steel cassette, if your indexing is off slightly, you've got quite a lot of leeway before the chain starts to interfere and catch on the, the tooth above it or the, or the teeth below it. So you have a little bit of leeway there with your indexing. It's not quite as simple as that, but the kind of theory holds. With the hybrid cassette here, the, the spacing of the teeth has to be the same, but because they're fatter, it basically means that you have much less leeway in terms of indexing. If, you're, if your indexing is off, even by say a fraction of a millimeter, the chain may well start to interfere with the teeth either above it or, or below it there. So again, whilst this is a really simplified view, I hope it can kind of serve to demonstrate why indexing on these hybrid cassettes is a bit finicky. Now I detest <laughs> a noisy, a noisy drivetrain to the point where if I couldn't get these to run silently, I just wouldn't use them at all. I would swallow the extra weight and use a fully, a fully steel cassette. But with a little bit of finessing of that rear barrel adjuster, it definitely can be done. And once it's all indexed properly, um, yeah, the shifting up and down the cassette is, is nice and snappy actually. And I really enjoy using these. Um, now I've used them quite extensively on both fully Shimano and fully Sensar group sets as well. Although it has to be said, indexing on Sensar is a, is a bit more finicky. So if you do fit one of these with your Sensar group set, do, do be prepared to fiddle around with this barrel adjuster for a little while to get these to, to run silently, but it definitely can be done. Okay, so in conclusion, um, <laughs> yeah, frankly, I actually really like these cassettes. They may not be the most durable thing in the world and the indexing can be a bit finicky, but they're cheap they shift well and the weight savings over a standard fully steel cassette are pretty stellar, if, uh, if you ask me. So if you're a bit of a weight weenie on a budget like moi, then yeah, uh, these, are, these are definitely worth a look actually. Um, yeah. Now a few things before you vamanos. Uh, yeah, from what I can see, these only come in 11 and 12 speed varieties. And also the aluminium part always seems to come with this coating on from the factory. At first I thought it was an anodized coating, but it chips off over time, a bit like a, a bit like an electroplating. It looks like almost electroplated zinc, but I don't know why it's there or what the purpose is. Um, so yeah, if you know what that could be, then yeah, definitely let me know in the comments. I'll be interested to see what you guys think about that actually. And lastly, in this episode, I haven't taken into account SRAM red cassettes because they, they are incredibly light. Some of the lightest out there, in fact. But my, my word, are they expensive? I mean, basically 10 times the cost of one of these hybrid cassettes here. Yeah, a little too rich for my blood, I've got to say. But 
Whilst filming, actually, whilst filming this, I picked up one of these. So this is a cassette from a company called S-Road. And it's a little more premium than the stuff I've uh, kind of demoed today, so it's about 70 quid. But it's constructed in the same way as the SRAM uh, red cassettes. So it's a single block of steel that's then milled out and fitted with an aluminium spider. So it's really lightweight, about 180 grams for this one. Um, but it, all the teeth are made of steel, so it should be nice and durable. So basically, I am really excited to see if this is a, this is any good, because it could be a game changer, really. We'll see. Um, so yeah, I'm going to stick this on the bike and, and give it a go. So get subscribed so you don't miss the, the video for this one. Um, anyway, that's pretty much it for today's episode. So uh, yeah, subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Um, hit the like button if you enjoyed enjoyed this video. And if you've got any questions or any comments about any of the cassettes that I've demoed today, then yeah, leave me a comment down below and I'll try to get back to as, uh, as many of you as I can. Um, right, well, I'm going to go out on uh, a little bike ride now because I think I, I deserve it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, is it still sunny? Yeah, just about. Right, well, in that case, I will see you uh, yeah, in the next episode. All right, ciao, ciao. What? What? What?